Georgia College Art and Technology Professor Michael Murphy joins us today. We're going to tell you about the President Obama time cover on GC Conversations. Hello and welcome to GC Conversations, the show where each week we bring in faculty, staff, alumni, and friends, and we talk all things Georgia College in this community. I'm your host, Wendell Staten, and thanks for joining us today on NBC TV4 right here in our Georgia College Television Studios. Also on WRGC 88.3 FM, our NPR studio right here on Georgia College. So, folks, we've got a real special treat for you today. Uh, Michael Murphy, Assistant Professor in Art and Technology, is our guest, and thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. Thanks for being Thanks for having me. And uh, I tell you, I, I want to jump right in. I always start off with a little background, that kind of information. But I'm going to get to that later today because I, I, I just got off your website and wow is all I got to say, Michael. I'm telling you what, you're doing some great work. You're humble. You're not going to accept that from me. But let me tell you, <laughs> it's fantastic. Thank and you. folks out there, go to mmike.com. Mmike, as in Murphy, I guess, Mike, mmike.com. And it is fantastic. And, and, and I just kind of want to get to a whole art discussion today. But as I go through your website, uh, there's two things that came to mind the vast array of things that you're doing. And then secondly, I don't know where you find the time to do this because I don't know how these things have to take forever. But let, let's talk about just the different types of artwork that you do. I don't know if you have a specialty area, if you're just everywhere, but mm -hmm. just some things I really haven't seen before. really like it. Sure. Tell um, me about it. Well, you know, I'm trying to create my own unique niche with uh, or niche with um, the work that I'm doing. Um, I basically have, well, I do public art. Um, which is like sort of large-scale public art installations, permanent works, okay. memorials, things like that. Um, and then I have gallery work, which is like sort of sales-oriented stuff. You know, I'm trying to make things that people would actually right. be able to possess. Yeah. And then I sort of make experimental gallery stuff. Okay. Um, those are kind of the, the three separate areas that I work in. The experimental gallery stuff can just be anything. Um, like, for instance, the one that I'm working on currently is a rendering of a of a, an assault rifle that's created by 394 little black toy balls that are suspended inside of a room. So the entire room is filled with um, all these little balls. Now something like that is impossible to sell. Right. You can never sell it to anyone. So it's sort of irrational to make in a sense, but it's important to me because it's uh, without bounds. Like okay. I don't have to make it three feet by three feet by gotcha. three feet, you know, gotcha. so that someone can own it. Um, so that's really nice to have that freedom. So I work in that mode, and then I work in the public art mode in which I'm trying to make things that are safe, that communities would appreciate and be able to engage in or with. And then um, the gallery stuff. Right. So, And then there's, there's separate areas inside of each of those um, different divisions right. of my discipline yeah. that, that I work in. Um, such as the water stuff. I do sound installations. I don't know if you happen yeah, to see any I of that. I saw this, yeah. yeah. Fast, tell us about this. Fascinating. Well, the sound installations are, um, I'm using pools of water as metaphors for the human body. Okay. And I'm subjecting them to uh, vibrational frequencies um, of my choosing. So I'm basically hooking speakers up to dishes of water and running sound into the water. Um, when sound travels through water, it actually travels better through water than it does through air. Right. And when it travels through water, the sound waves are visible. So you can actually see the sound waves. So okay. it's a way of pictorializing the way that the sound actually, um, the way that it really looks. You know, we can see the waves. So, yeah, you know, and your body is all water, so it has like this relationship okay. to that work. Um, there will be one at the faculty exhibition in May, okay. um, a smaller, small version of the water piece. Right. And it's, um, the way that your body relates to it is okay. just ridiculous. It's, um, you know, when you hear certain chords that just resonate your whole body, yeah. that's kind of how you feel when you're around these pools okay. of water as, yeah. they, as they resonate. Let me, let me ask you, let's go into this time factor. So, mm -hmm. so from, and I, there's no answer to this, I know, from start to finish, but I would just think, even the, let, let's just talk with the water thing. The first time you came up with that, and how long does that take? I, you know, I mean, from, from, how do you come up with it, and then how do you, you know, finished product? How long does that take? Maybe uh, one of those. Just give me an example of one of those. I've been working on all of the concepts that I have. I've been working on them for 
since 2001, okay. so at least 12 years yeah. on each of them. And I've kind of been doing the same thing I started doing when I was in undergrad Okay. in school. In undergrad, I was trying to, I was trying to merge two-dimensional and three-dimensional characteristics together into one, yeah. one piece. Um, and in doing that, I've kind of found the angle that I want to take on it. I'm right. rendering flat graphics in three dimensions, right. um, which no one was really doing. Right. Um, two years ago even, yeah. but um, I started doing it 12, 13 years ago, and I've still been refining it and kind of exploring different ways in which I can present it to, to viewers. Now let's go, uh, you talked a little bit about your undergrad experience, Let, let's now kind of go into the piece a little bit about you. How'd you get interested in art? Is this something, uh, you know, at a very early age or something, maybe did something trigger to you in one of your classes in high school or middle school, or whatever, but let, t tell me a little bit about you, where you're from mm -hmm. and all that stuff, how you got here? Um, well, I was born in Youngstown, Ohio, okay. which had, I don't know, one interesting fact about it is it has the highest cloud coverage in the United States okay. and it has the highest murder rate in the United States. Okay. So it was this really dark, strange place. Um, so so you, literally not a lot of sunlight there. No, yeah. literally. Yeah, there was not a lot of sunlight. Right. There was a lot of suicide and a lot of murder. Sure. And gotcha. the highest murder rate. Um, okay. It was like neck and neck with D.C. for murder and neck and neck with Seattle for cloud coverage. It was, wow. It was okay. crazy. Yeah. I was held at gunpoint three times before I got out of high school. Okay. Wow. Um, pretty insane. So so that's where I grew up. Um, and I always made things ever since I was a little kid. Uh -huh. um, I was this tall and I was making costumes and building forts and cars and yeah. weapons and things like that, you know, weapons. Right. Um, so I just have always made things. Um, I never thought of it as art. I never really knew that I would make use of right. being a fabricator yeah. like that. Um, yeah. To me, it was always I wanted a toy. Mom and Dad wouldn't buy it. I would make it. Okay. You know. Yeah. So that was the solution to the problem. And now it's you know employed uh, for different purposes. Right. But. Um, all throughout public school, I had my last art class in public school was in fifth grade. Okay. Um, when I was in high school, they actually told me that um, I didn't need art to graduate from high school. Right. So all throughout public schools, I was kind of blocked from art. Sure. I had one art teacher in the fifth grade who told me that um, that I should be an artist. Okay. And other than her, that was the only person that ever mentioned anything wow. about art. I had okay. no idea what art was. Okay. Never been to a museum or gallery. Never seen any. Never heard speak of it or huh. anything like that. And then when I went to um, undergraduate at Kent State University in Ohio. I started working with, um, well, I took a sculpture class with a guy named Brinsley Terrell. And for the first time in my life, I saw a person who was living a life that I thought was really right. um, remarkable and something that I would be interested in doing with mine. So I kind of modeled my blueprint for my career and my life after his. Okay. Um, I sort of cloned his kind of you know, gotcha. MO. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, we're up against a break. We're going to come right back sure. and get, dig mm -hmm. a little bit more about uh, all your creative ventures. And, uh, again, just fascinating. So for Michael right, Murphy, I'm Wendell Staten, and we'll be right back on GC's Conversations. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just I, there was a I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man! If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point. There's smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Let's switch to Energy Star light bulbs and stop burning through cash. Saving energy saves you money. Hello, and welcome back to GC Conversations. I'm Wendell Staten, along with Assistant Professor of Art and Technology, Michael Murphy. And Michael, we left off talking uh, uh, kind of about your interest in art. You said that you got to college and uh, you saw one of your art classes, and, and it, that kind of really spurred it on to make you think about a career in this. But mm -hmm. I guess even before that, did you go to college with an art major or desire at all, or did you major in art? Uh, I did. I was, I was When I initially started going to college, I was planning on being a photojournalist. Okay. Um, my whole thing in, in life has been to try to figure out um, a career that I really enjoy yeah. um, and make money doing something that I like. That's, that's it. That's, yeah. that's what everybody wants. It is, yeah. <laughs> you know, I came from, my dad's a plumber, my mom's a nurse. I was brought up 
chopping wood and doing plumbing in houses like all throughout my childhood. Right. So my idea was, my understanding of life was that I had to work hard no matter what. That was right. how I was brought up. Um, kind of wish my dad was a you know someone on the stock exchange or something like that and he right. had taught me some different principles but it's fine so I'm a hard <laughs> worker so I have to work hard all the time um, so I'm trying to find this work that will pay the bills right essentially so Wh I'm programmed which again I will go back to that work ethic as I <clears throat> see it just in the amount of items that you're producing you're working hard I can yeah. tell you that <laughs> yeah really hard. Uh, I mean there's just everywhere and, and I, I want to kind of go into a couple of things that uh, uh, that I saw on there that I, first of all, you mentioned public art mm -hmm. and I love the one. And again, folks go to mmike.com, mmike.com and you'll see all this. It'll just blow you away. Uh, one of those was the, the, a staircase and you essentially had someone almost like they were tumbling down the stairs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. I mean, I love that. Oh, thanks. Where's that at? Uh, that's in Cleveland, Ohio at the okay. East 55th street station. All right. So at one of the uh, uh, train stations. Tra okay. Mm -hmm. And, train. and uh, how, how did that happen to where they said, hey, come make this for us? How did all that work out? Um, well, I got into the public art uh, business by uh, being a fabricator for another artist who was doing a lot of public art projects. And one of his, um, one of the organizations that he frequently did commissions for was the Greater Regional Cleve Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority, okay. RTA. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to know them through working with him. Um, so I started, you know, when I was 20, I got shortlisted for my, my first commission. I started working on public art commission, large scale projects at 20. Okay. Um, I had my own construction company at the time and was remodeling a house I owned and um, was applying for commissions all over the country. Right. So I got one um, in Cleveland and just kind of started there. Okay. And just I mean, if you go to Kent, you'll see my work. I have enormous public works in Kent, Ohio. They, okay. They um, they asked it, they asked me to um, make the bicentennial memorial for the for the city. Okay. When I was like thirty or something like right. that. Um, that fell through, but but I still have other works there. You can see I have um, five different permanent public pieces in okay. Cleveland, Ohio. So kind of like leaving things yeah. behind everywhere I, I live. Um, so they kind of know me. Yeah. You know, like a, if you drive into the arts district in um, Cleveland, the, the gateway sculpture is mine okay. um, into the arts district in, in, in Cleveland. So okay. um, it, it's the, kind of a familiar I, I saw the brain. Yeah. Where's that at? The brain is on Kent campus. Okay. Um, I actually didn't, there were two stones that got carved. I carved the other one. Okay. Um, and Brinsley carved the brain. And then um, there's a 200 foot long concrete wall that looks like a bookcase okay. that's in that plaza as well. So I made all the molds for that. So I okay. consider that kind of my baby. Right, um, I got in, you. In Kent. Yeah. So, so at, at Kent, did you end up uh, ma uh, majoring in art, or what mm -hmm. was your major there? Yeah, I got a, um, a bachelor's of fine arts in sculpture. Okay. And then from there, you left Kent, and, and uh, tell us between there how you, when you got to George College. Well, I went to Chicago and, and got my master's degree in art and technology. Okay. Um, made mostly sculpture. Did a lot of bronze casting, uh -huh. a lot of welding while I was there. Um, took a few technology courses, um, left there and did the adjunct thing and did part-time teaching. Uh, at one point I was teaching at three different colleges. I had 20 hours of driving just between the jobs wow. per week. Wow. And then, and then I had all the work on top of that. And then I'm making art on top of that, right? You're not sleeping a lot. No, I don't sleep a lot. Um, and I've aged more than I should have, um, like in the last 10 years, it's insane. Um, you know, like, I actually need eight hours of sleep to function properly, and I usually get about four, so, right. so if I ever seem like I'm a little off, that's why, <laughs> you know, because I'm not sleeping. There's no time. I mean, I was up all last night building this model for a uh, for an installation coming up in Chattanooga. I have a commission in Paris that I'm supposed to have shipped by March 1st. I haven't even started on it okay. yet. Okay. Uh -huh. It's going to be crazy, you know. <laughs> um, so I'm just super busy. Yeah. Okay. And then all the emails and you know, school takes so much time. Yeah. And it has to come first right. before anything else. Right. And then, so how'd you matriculate to George College? How long have you been here? Well, I've been here five years. Okay. Um, 2007, I had just finished uh, one of my public projects in Cleveland, and um, the money ran out. I needed, you know, um, I had been adjunct teaching at the time and constantly looking for a full time position, which right. is really difficult to do. Um, my students were always really surprised when I explained to them how few jobs there are for professors in the United States. Okay. Like right now, I'm 
you know, I'm always looking at the market, and right now there's 12 positions in the United States for sculptors to wow. teach college. Yeah, it's remarkable wow. how few there are. Okay. So, um, it's difficult to find full-time yeah. teaching positions, so I would go anywhere in the country for one. Um, right. And this one opened up, and I came here. Okay, fantastic. I've been here ever since and love it. And so, tell us a little bit about your classroom setting and some of the things that are going on in your interaction with the students, and mm -hmm. kind of give us a big view of that. Um, well, what I do is I use technology and I um, integrate it with traditional art making techniques, essentially. Sculpture mostly, a lot of painting, a lot of drawing, things like that. So I'm taking technology and integrating it into um, traditional media and then I'm using the technology to document it, publish it. Um, all, the, all the career support stuff that goes along with um, the art making process is you know mostly technology based so in my courses I'm focusing strictly on the technology aspect of my of my career of my work um, I try to teach in the class what I'm good at um, okay. so there are some things that I've invented that I teach my students there are other things I, I teach them how to build websites I teach them how to edit videos okay. teach them how to work with InDesign Illustrator Photoshop things like that right. um, kind of all things digital I'm starting to merge and turning to um, Starting to get into 3D modeling with the students. Um, so those are the things that we do. Uh, it's really fun, I, I really enjoy it, but I would love to be teaching sculpture. Right, okay. Um, to be completely honest, and um, I really want the art department at Georgia College to start um, offering sculpture courses. I right. think it's very, very important. Sculpture is more of your passion. That's what I'm hearing you say. Well. No, no? Scul okay. sculpture is just fabrication. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I think that woodworking is a craft. I think that ceramics is a craft. Okay. I think that sculpture is a craft. Painting is a craft. I think they're all just craft. They're all just manual skills that a person um, has the ability to uh, to harness, right? right? To call their own, like mm -hmm. welding and bronze casting. And sculpture is just kind of this melting pot of all these different craft okay. disciplines okay. that don't fit anywhere else. Gotcha. Uh. So. It's not about it being sculpture. It's about all of the all of those processes, right? right yeah. um, that sculpture encompasses. Yeah. We don't have any of them, and we need right. to okay. because um, we need to be teaching our students how to make things. Right. Um, and that's kind of what sculpture is. It's the fabrication part. If you're a painter, you should know how to make your own stretchers. Gotcha. That kind of like falls into the wood shop sculpture area. Right. But it's painting. Right. Um, yeah. All the disciplines kind of lean on sculpture. I'm not big on any particular discipline. Okay. It's okay. irrelevant to me. I'm yeah. a multimedia artist. Yeah. I'm not even a sculptor. Um, but it's important, you know, if, if you dismiss sculpture, you're just dismissing all these different right, right. Yeah. areas of craft, which is not good. We're up on our, our next break, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to come back and talk about your work with Time <coughs> Magazine with the President Obama. Cool. Uh, and uh, so we'll talk about that when we come back on GC Conversations. Full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are the number one killer of children 1 through 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size.
welcome back to GC Conversations for our final segment today with Michael Murphy, Professor of Art and Technology here at George College. And Michael, uh, I want to talk about the, the piece that you did with Time Magazine with President Obama. Uh, uh, and just kind of tell us from the, from the first phone call to the final product, kind of fill us in on that. It's quite fascinating. Yeah, it was really fascinating for me too. Um, from my point of view, they, you know, I'm, I'm sitting at home, I'm working, and I get this email, and it's from D.W. Pine from Time Magazine, and he says, hey, I'm calling to see if we can commission you to make cover of the next issue of Time Magazine. So I re responded back, of course, right. yeah, I'd be delighted, right. that sounds great. Yeah. Um, so we set up a, a time to talk, we got on the phone and talked about it. And it was very strange and very mysterious. They couldn't tell me what issue it was. Okay. And he's like, it, all I can tell you is that it, uh, we need you to do a portrait of Obama. Okay. And, 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 and tell me the yeah. time uh, between the publication magazine when you got this phone call. This About is, three months? This is like November 1st. Okay. November 4th. Okay, gotcha. Like yeah. And it needed to be done in three weeks. Okay. All right. All right. Gotcha. Okay. Go ahead. So a lot of my work is really labor intensive and takes a really long time to fabricate. Yeah. It takes a long time to design. And what takes even usually the longest is just figuring out what to do. Right. Um, because you have to invest so much work in it. The design phase is really important. Yeah. You need to spend an ample amount of time on that. Otherwise, you might spend all that time fabricating something that's not right. worth Got while. You. So the design phase was t takes a while. So, um, so I had three weeks to make this thing. I'm like, all right. So my initial plan was, okay, I'm going to make as much work as I possibly can in the next three weeks and then just try to give them the best one. Okay. You know, that, that's right. my approach. Um, because you'll make one and it's, nah, it's okay. You make the next one. It's like, oh, yeah, that's better. You know, and then you keep making more and it just gets better every time. Yeah. It's usually how it works. So there's all this mystery surrounding this, this job. Um, I don't know what issue it is. Uh, I don't know any of the text that's even going to go on the cover. So I'm asking him. Give me a starting point. You know, like, what kind of portrait of Obama do you want? Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well, think electoral divide. Make something with red and blue and think electoral divide. Gotcha. Try to, try to um, encapsulate that into a sculpture. And I'm like, all right. So I'm making all these pieces, and I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, this is the person of the year issue. It's the only issue of Time Magazine that has any sort of mystery surrounding right, it. Okay. Right. So it's got to be that one. Yeah. Um, but according to them, they hadn't chosen who the person of the year was, you know, and they're yeah. and I'm I'm watching them on on the internet, you know, doing interviews and they're playing all these games I and talking to all these people about yeah. it, you know, and I'm like, you guys already know who it is. It's Obama, <laughs> you know. I know. Like I should call those guys. And you know, they're doing this interview with Newt Gingrich, you know, Newt Gingrich is like telling them who he thinks it should be and why it shouldn't be Obama. And I'm like, Newt, it's it's already him. You know? <laughs> So it was fun to like, you right. know, to be a part of this inside joke and watch Newt Gingrich, you right. know, getting interviewed about it, and like, I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was interesting and surreal, you know, like, because you don't get a phone call like that all the time. You yeah. Know? And, and I'm just some dude who lives in a house by a lake in Georgia. You right. Know? I'm like, ah, oh, cool. Um, so it's interesting. So I, I'm working on it and sending them images, and um, every image I sent them, they were kind of like, ah, oh, it's nice, you know, and I'm like. All right, I need to make another one, you know, like, right. and I just kept making more until they were like, until I got the response I wanted when they were like, oh my God, that's okay. amazing, you know. Okay. So finally I made the fourth one, fifth one or sixth one, something like that, and they just like went bonkers. They loved it. Okay. Um, and um, I got it to them on time and, you know, I still didn't know whether or not it was going to get used for the cover because it was always, you know, DW and I, he's the art director at the time. We had this conversation where I told him, look, what I'm doing here, I'm experimenting. I'm trying new things. It might not work. Right. Right. So he's like, I understand. He's like, and just so you know, I can't promise you that we're going to use it for the cover. We have several options that we're working on, and you're one of them. Okay. Gotcha. I was like, okay, perfect. Good. Yeah. You know, and I understand that. I mean, and that's smart because they're not putting all their eggs in one basket, right? right? Sure. So I'm, so I'm making this piece, and... um. I get it done, I get, I, get, I get it to them, the images and everything, and I'm like, well, you know, is it going to get used? And they're like, we don't know, we can't tell you. Okay. You're going to have to watch the Today Show. You're going to have to tune into the Today Show at 7 a.m. on Monday. Right. Like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> really? Um, 
So I, turn, turn, I go down to the, I don't have a TV. I haven't had TV for like 17 okay. years. I, uh, I, I don't do it. Um, right. I teach video, but I don't watch TV. So um, I have to go down to the gas station to watch the Today Show because right. they have a television. And um, saw him hold up the cover, and it wasn't mine. And I'm like, oh, you know, that's okay. how I found out. Like, the damn TV. Okay. Like, really? <laughs> so... Um, uh, you know, so I look at my phone, and immediately, as soon as it comes on, DW sends me an email or a text, and it says, you know, hey, I'm really sorry. I'm sure you saw that it wasn't your cover. Because of the shootings, we had to go with something much darker and melancholy to express the mood of a nation. Okay. So I was like, oh, all right. You know, and I looked at it, and I wrote him back, and I said, you know, I really like the cover you guys picked. I think you made the right decision. Um, so what they did with mine was, what they were always planning on doing with it was, um, one of the things I do on the internet is to, to try to, to express the 360 nature of my work. I do these, um, I do 360 photographs. So I essentially put the work on a turntable and photograph it in, in the round and then publish it in various different ways on my site right. and other places on the internet. So they wanted to make an interactive 360 object of the sculpture for the um, Time Magazine iPad edition. Oh, so it's the digital okay. version of, of, the, right. of the magazine. And they did that, and it was great. Um, and I think that it was exactly the right way to um, to present the work okay. in that forum. Um, I, I don't think it should have been on the cover. Um, I don't think it would have been right. I like the picture they picked, and I like what they did with the work. Um, and they felt so bad about not giving me the cover, they promised me another cover <laughs> and paid me a lot of money. <laughs> so, you know, they were, like, trying to heal my wounds That's right. with money. And I'm like, oh, it feels better, you know. <laughs> it was great. So it worked out. Well, I noticed on your, uh, you talked about that on your website, and that's why I asked you, it, it almost looks like it's computer graphics, mm -hmm. but it's not. Like this piece, you said, I think it was 66 pieces, mm -hmm. and you just explained how you put it on a turntable, essentially, and just continue to focus. It looks phenomenal on the website. It looks Thanks. like digital art. Thanks. Yeah, I actually, um, after that, I, th this last one that I just made just now is only digital. Okay, <laughs> okay. And it's more perfect. Right. You know, because when you make it in real life, I mean, one of the things I like about it being in real, well, one, experiencing, experiencing the work in person is completely different than seeing it on the internet. Right. Because I'm rendering illusions of flat graphics that have no dimensionality to them. And on the computer, that's what it is. Right. Um, even though it's a sculpture, it completely flattens it out. But it does the same thing when you're in person. So when you're looking at this three-dimensional object in person and it flattens out, it affects the rest of the space around the object. Um, essentially, everything in your entire world gets flat. Yeah. Because something that you know is three-dimensional appears flat, it brings everything else around it into question mm -hmm. as to how it appears. And you kind of have to do this kind of like uh, perceptual shift um, when you look at the work to allow to s yourself to see it as being flat. Right. So that whole experience that happens when you view the work in person doesn't happen on the internet. So right. it's virtually impossible for me to really capture the essence of the work and put it in an electronic medium. Yeah. So because of that, this last model is strictly um, digital. Okay. Uh, but it's it's a uh, it's a sketch for a large installation um, that I'm working on. But I really like doing it digital. It was really nice. With okay. A lot less yeah. work. Yeah. It's much easier. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. We're, we're up we're up against our last break, but mm -hmm. real quick. Again, at mmike.com, I you. saw uh, uh, popsicle sticks. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Just uh, the one was a heart, and one was a, a, a deer. Uh, and uh, boy, I tell you, there's just no, there's no end to the, to, to the, to the different mediums that you use. I just, I really think it's neat. It's great Thank work, you. man. I Thank really you. enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So, folks, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, uh, go to the mmike website. Uh, you'll see that Time Magazine cover. Uh, you'll see all kinds of great work by Michael Murphy, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you, Wendell. I appreciate you having Good. me. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, for Michael Murphy, I'm Wendell Satan, and we'll see you next time on GC Conversations. Mm -hmm.